Morning guys from the big box store. Picking up some paint today. Gonna redo the uh, bathroom. Need that to look nice and sharp for guests to come over. And it's been kind of a messy proposition lately. So I got them, I don't know if you can see this. It's called this Honey Bunny. It looks a little greener on there. Let me see if I can get a better look at it. It's called Honey Bunny and I kind of like the look of that. It goes well with the child and fixtures not too far off what I already had a nice new Worcester brush too good morning everybody welcome to the bathroom rejuvenation project here and if you saw the intro the other day you will have seen uh, what I went through to try to make a barrier free uh, shower for Missy Jen and to take what was really a funky bathroom terror with rotted floors and beams underneath and just a, a real mess and turn it into something that's uh, I think is pretty doggone nice here. So I am underway on the rejuvenation and let's talk about what I want to accomplish. Like all bathrooms, it takes a lot of wear and tear. I'm immediately looking at the lights and I want to change things out to uh, LEDs here. I've got to reduce the power bill. You see, I've taken covers off of all the electric. I pulled all this electric and did all of this uh, work myself here. In, uh, you know, it has a fan, a shower. That's very important to keep a shower really nice in a bathroom is to have a fan to vent out the humidity. Uh, it turned out really good. It's a barrier-free shower. I lowered the floor here. I put new beams underneath. I put a single mixer valve show, uh, shower valve in there for the uh, shower, hot and cold. It's one of my, well, it's probably the biggest video I have on the Rosie Murphy channel. I think it's something over half a million views how to install that. Uh, I put a seat in so Missy Jen could be a uh, good uh, shower herself if she needed to to transfer to that seat but the main thing is no barrier here to entry and that makes it really important but over time wear and tear people have uh, probably me pulled on the shower not the shower but the uh, um, towel racks here and kind of wrecked them up a little bit so I need to uh, sand this down, but the first thing I want to do, I'll probably do the sanding first because that's going to drop down and then I'll vacuum and everything. Uh, and then I'm going to clean off all the baseboard. I do not believe it needs to be repainted. It looks pretty good. And then we're going to remove the cover from the fan over there. Isn't that pretty cool? The old Montgomery Ward. Pretty wild. I kept the original doors. These were all painted white. I like the Tiger Maple. These are hollow, but they're really cool. Yeah, the doorknobs are kind of funky, but they're original, and I like that. And I wanted to keep things as original as possible for the uh, doors. So this will move us forward, another big step forward. We've got company coming next week, and we want to put the best foot, I want to put the best foot forward in having a nice, clean, Bathroom freshly repainted. The color is going to be about the same, slightly lighter. It's a Glidden. It's called a Honey Bear. I think this original one was like a peanut or something like that. So I like it because it pulls together the colors, the tile, and all that. This was a big job doing the tile here. Now, reiterate again the most important thing about this job the average person is not going to be able to lower the floor, pour a mortar bed, form the mortar bed within 15 minutes before it sets, and then you have stone. I get that. But if you have a bathroom renovated and you're going to hire a contractor, it's absolutely, totally imperative that wherever there's corners of the bathroom, that's where cracks develop in walls on tiles. You can't, the contractor or you cannot grout these corners, okay? Because grout is a very hard, almost stone-like substance. And when that dries and sets, any kind of movement, and of course walls move independently of each other, is going to result in cracks. If you get caulk that's the same color as the grout and you caulk these corners, you will never ever have leaks. Very, very, very important. Let's get to it. Let's look at the baseboard. It looks pretty good. I've cleaned that all up. Wipe that down real well. There's no reason to uh, repaint that. It looks perfect. 
Okay, here's the next pro tip. Since we're going to be doing cutting in here and we're going to be working overhead, I'm going to remove the cover on the fan. Be very careful about getting up on the ladder with a paint can, okay? It's best to get up and down. I got a little more wiping down to do on the ceiling here. It's best to go up and down the ladder. Dip your brush, go up. Dip your brush, go up. When it comes to rolling, then I will put a something on the floor to protect against spattering here, splattering. So for now, I'm going to do a little wipe along the ceiling. Make sure uh, we get all the cobwebs and everything else down. All right. Do not risk dropping, having a catastrophic paint drop. Okay. Trying not to hit the ceiling here because I don't believe that that needs to be painted again. Okay, go around and just do the rest of it. Go ahead and start sanding this down. I like to use sanding blocks because they have a very wide surface. If you use just sandpaper and you put your fingers on it, you can create low spots. Always work from the inside of the patch and feather that to the outside. Okay, and that's going to be really, really nice. Okay, so I'm going to get cracking on that. And then we'll clean up down here and we'll break out the paint. We'll remove that cover. But uh, let's get this nice and smooth down. I'll sand it down, check for smoothness. I cleaned the floor all up there. We're gonna have a lot more, we're gonna have a lot more to do on the uh, floor coming up. And I also have tile sealer in every two years, year, certainly no more than two years. You should seal the tile. It helps to prevent uh, staining and it keeps water from penetrating. But that's not our portfolio brief today. Ours is to get ready to get painting. I'm going to remove this fan cover now. We get the ladder set up and we're going to cut in the ceiling line and we're going to be working our way down. I'm also going to remove the light shroud from this. I'll be changing out those balls to temporarily just putting them back. Everything's all dry. It's time to get to the painting. And I always keep my paint can down low. Right now I have it on the back of the toilet here. And you need to make very sure that you uh, protect against the catastrophic spill. Now, I like to work from left to right because I'm right-handed. If I try to work from left, from right to left, then it just, it just doesn't seem to flow well. So I'm going to try to get the high surfaces, high verticals, horizontals, okay, low horizontals. So let's get going. I'm liking the look of this uh, honey. Put that on high. Be careful of your cutting in here. Nice, smooth lines, and I'm using Glidden Essential Paint here, and I'm liking that. Okay, I'm going to cut down, just move your brush smoothly, no jerky short motions. There's a definite art to painting and like anything else, it does take practice. Okay, so we got that down there, going to go a little lower here. This way I have total control, if I drop anything it's just one brush. And I shouldn't have a big issue of doing a cleanup. Don't be the kind of person that rests your paint can on the front part of the ladder. You're just inviting catastrophe. Something comes along, catches your attention, you jerk the ladder around. Before you know it, you've got a 24 carat catastrophe on your hands, okay? I'm trying to save you guys a lot of hassle because I think I've literally painted a stripe around the world. My time, my very first job 
was as a painter at 14, painting a high school, and my big brother, who I worked with at the time, we worked with a company called General Contractors, I had a work permit. My father believed in the value of work, and as soon as you were able to work, you get out there, and you join the workforce, and you'd be productive. And we had these big five-gallon buckets of paint. And I don't know what possessed my brother, old wood, wooden rickety ladder. And he insisted on putting that five-gallon container on the front of the ladder. He went to move it, and bam, all down on the floor. I just punched out for the day. I was, you know, I was done. I mean, we were, we were off that job. You know what I mean? That always stuck with me. So, the thing about good painting is always maintaining control of the paint environment. Okay, it's very, 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 very critical. Okay, you don't want any catastrophes. We're gonna do on top of the light shroud while we're here. Catch that off. That's around. I'm liking this color. There's not a dramatic color change. It's just a little bit lighter. So I'm going to go ahead and move my ladder. We're going to keep working around. And uh, yeah, let's get this thing painted. So please keep control of your paint location. All right. If, if it means you got to go up and down the ladder, look at it this way. You're going to get a lot of great exercise. Okay. It'll help your butt. Trust me. Nice, clean lines, okay? Nice, clean, sharp. Mm, no smudges, no oopsie daisy. Because if you oopsie daisy, guess what? You got to get the white paint out, and then you're going to paint that part of the ceiling, and it's going to look ultra right, and the rest is going to look uh, uh, dirty. So you want to be very, very careful. Okay, control, control, control. That's the whole key when it comes to painting. And yes, I know cutting in is an art. A lot of people don't like it. Everybody just like to get at the spray, hit everything, same color, ceiling, wall. That's today's contractors, right? There's no, there's no style to anything, so, all right. It's all up to you to be the style mistress or master. Okay. All right, you're gonna get a nice, out of this whole deal, I'm gonna get a nice rejuvenated bathroom. How do you like that? Clean lines, that's the key. Good coverage. Knock out our corners here. And we're not far from rolling, right? This is single coverage paint, it does a really good job. So, we already got a good base, we don't need any primer. Anything like that. I'm just cutting the inlet and turn it. Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. Turn that a little bit. I try to put a little more on where there's going to be a lot of uh, where there's going to be a lot of wear and tear. And that's the way we're doing. Cutting is all done. All the cutting is complete. Looks pretty good. It's pretty good. All we got to do is roll it and we are good to go. And if you're a good clean painter, this is the way your stuff should look. Right? As Johnny Bench used to say for Krylon, no runs, 
no drips, no errors. Do it the right way. Now rolling itself is something that's got to be done the right way and that's what I suggest that you use a little ground cover because you get what's called micro splatters when the roller is uh, rolling and they're flying off. You may not see them until later when you get down on the floor. You're like, oh, what are all these dots of paint? So I'm going to get the roller set up. Uh, we're going to roll one wall at a time here. Everything's all cut in. The low parts have been painted all underneath, like underneath the toilet down there. Instead of getting down there with a roller and being dorky, I just painted it, hand painted that with the brush and it looks fantastic. So let me get set up for Rollerama. This bubble wrap makes a great floor protector. You can work it into the corners pretty well, hold this position. Gives you a nice little crunchy bubble too. So we've got our pan there, it's been used a couple dozen times, we've got a roller down there. Let's to commence to rolling. And just a little pro tip, do not take your paint pan up with you. Come down and load your roller. And then get yourself up on the ladder, okay? Roll that good and tight. Control, 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 control. Alright. Get a good bit of paint on it. And we're rolling, rolling, rolling. Let's get those doggies rolling. Rolling that bathroom roll high. Putting that pretty paint on. In any kind of weather, I'd like to have a buck for everything I've rolled in life. Be a neat painter, don't be a freaking slob. Don't slop that paint on, have control. This is not a kindergarten project, you want to make it nice. Don't be a slob. You don't want to do it twice. Man, I am good. I am good. Roll right here in the corner. Nice. A little bit there. Wonderful. Okay. Now we can get down to ground level and we can continue the roll. Okay? Cool. Poo wee woo wee. We're gonna let this dry good, but we are done. I am done. You're watching. Hopefully enjoying what a refresher here. I'm enjoying the honey color. We're going to uh, keep the paint just lightly covered here, just in case I have to go back and do some touch up. But I think it looks pretty doggone fantastic. We'll see you for the wrap up and this will be part two. Tomorrow will be all about what's going on with the floor and the uh, tile here. Okay, that's what we got to do. So let's just wait a while for this to dry. All finished. <laughs> I think it looks fantastic. Yeah, not a not a big color change. 
but a clean change, a nice clean look. And I love it. Cleaned up the baseboards too. Kind of nice. Clean lines all around. Really happy about the way that turned out. This is going to wrap up uh, part one in the bathroom restoration. And tomorrow we'll be concentrating our attention over here. Okay, so thank you guys for being along. It is very appreciated. This has held up extremely well since 2000. 14, I think 2014, right? So your thumbs up as usual are appreciated. I know some people were talking about collars and things like that. I already picked the uh, collar out and uh, I've always liked the way this collar connects in here. Some people suggested ivory. Yes, that would look beautiful too, but I chose to go with this. Thumbs up are appreciated and thanks so much.